Ooh, look at that. Mm -mm. Nice. Ladies and gentlemen, coming from the depths of the mighty Mississippi, we give you the one, the only, see ya, don't want to be ya, carry my leg along. <laughs> Boom. Woo. <laughs> I feel like we needed intro music like at a basketball game. All right, let me share my desktop. This is like the first major. Uh-oh. Let me make sure she's uh, still on the... Oh no, she got dropped. Oh, there you are. Great. <laughs> what happened? I shared there you my go. Okay. and died. All right, I'm going away again. I'm going away. Okay, I'm going to okay. try again. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay, desktop two. Share. Am I, okay, I think I didn't lose you this time. Can everyone see my screen? And it says, Web mentions plus 11D really big, so I'm not sharing the wrong screen. <laughs> Do all our tech checks first. You can hear me clearly because you're saying yes. Yay. So um, hello, everyone. My name is Sia Karamalegos, as Kenna told you. And I'm really excited today to talk to you about in the indie web um, and 11D and web mentions. I like to say 11D web mentions are a match made in heaven. So, you know, two hearts. <laughs> All righty. What I should do is open up my speaker notes too, just in case I need them. And um, again, my name is Sia. I am pretty active on Twitter. So you can follow me. I'm the Green Greek. So if you have questions or, you know, you just want to, connect in the future, that's a great place to connect with me. And I have a pretty built out site, sia.codes, where I have a lot of articles and I try to post links to talks and things like that there as well. Oh, <laughs> and I'm, I live in New Orleans. This is me on Mardi Gras. I like to build my own costume. So this was the last in-person Mardi Gras we had. I was uh, a champagne bottle. Oh, it was the good old times. Um, this is a link to a previous version of this talk, which was actually shorter and focused just on the web mentions part. But I am going to update these slides. And when we get a link to this recording, I'm also going to post it here. You don't have to copy that whole link. If you just go to sia.codes in this select writing area, you'll see this, you know, web mentions plus 11 e talk. And right now it's just the old version of stuff, but um, I added some new content in here. And so all of that will be up there once um, I finish out the talk and have a chance to push it up to GitHub. <laughs> all right, let's get started. So what are we going to build today? Or what are you going to sort of see me build today um, in a short manner? Uh, so if you go to one of my posts, and I will just, uh, let's go to this one, 11 d and Cloudinary Images. And you scroll down to the very bottom. You can see this section called web mentions and you can see there's 65 likes, there's 11 retweets. <laughs> there's only one comment. Some of them have more comments than that. But um, this isn't, there's no commenting system on my website. You see, there's no like, you don't just write on here. This is all built with web mentions and most of these are done through Twitter. And so that's when I'm gonna kind of show you how I built out today. So web mentions enable one website to notify another website that the former contains a reference to the latter. So that's like a kind of a technical way of thinking about it, what's maybe a more realistic way. Um, so when you link to a website, you can send it a web mention to notify it. So if it supports web mentions, then that site might display your post as a comment, like, or other response, and then presto, you're having a conversation. So it's a way to have conversations that are decentralized from any one platform. And this is actually a quote from the IndieWeb.org. And the IndieWeb is a people-focused alternative to the corporate web. And a big principle of it is owning your own content. So let's talk about those principles. One is to own your own domain. 
So I have sia.codes. Then you own your own content and data. So everything I, um, all my content is hosted there. It's hosted on my own um, uh, sites. But then I can also syndicate elsewhere. So I might have posts on my site, but I'll still post on dev.2. So like on both dev.2 and medium, you can post an article there and then you can set the canonical link. And that canonical link is important. You want that to point to your own personal site. Um, that says, you know, what's the true or original version and then you won't be punished in terms of SEO. So you can still have like the best of both worlds. And then if something happens like, you know, Dev.2 goes out of business, you don't lose all your content. You, you still have it. It was just syndicated there. And then you can still connect with everyone using web mentions. So how does it all work together? Well, webmention.io is a service, a hosted service that collects web mention data on your behalf. And what you do is when you sign up for it, it gives you some links to put in the head of your HTML. And these allow you to start collecting web mentions and pingbacks. Pingbacks are an older protocol for it. So you probably don't need them if you weren't using web mentions in the old days. How you actually send a web mention, this is a curl version of it, but um, you have your um, API endpoint and then what you do is you send two pieces of information, the source URL, um, which is your URL, and the target, which is the post you're applying to. Now on the web, we don't usually work in curls, we usually work in forms. So this is what it looks like in a form format, if that's easier to understand. And this exact form is on my website. You can manually send me a web mention, like if your website talks about my post, for example, you can actually put it there. And um, so the form action goes to that API endpoint. And then there's an input. This is the URL that they input. And then I have a hidden input, which just contains the URL of this page so that it knows that it's talking about this specific page. All right. So I'm pretty active on Twitter, like I said, and so I'd really like to bring in those interactions as well. And Bridgie is a service that allows you to connect various social media platforms like Twitter, um, Instagram, and these others, but I have a coding blog, so I mostly just use Twitter and I'm not stylish enough for Instagram. I have not connected GitHub because I haven't figured out a way that that would be relevant for my website. I think it could be relevant for others. Um, I know that Deb.2 was working on an API at one point, but I haven't seen any updates for that. But it'd be really cool to bring those in. I used to post on Medium, but I don't post there anymore. So once you log into Bridgie with like, for example, your Twitter um, account, this is what it would look like. You'll see basically all your Twitter activity is down here, but then the ones where there's actually a link to some of your content, you would see this sent. You see, it's like that web mention was sent because I think this was like a retweet of an old post I did um, a long time ago. But for the mo most of the activity is not actually a web mention. And then they poll periodically and you can also force a poll. So that's Bridgie. So how do you set it all up? Um, first, you set up what's called Indie Auth and that allows you to log in with your domain. So you, you literally, lo your login is your domain. Um, and then you sign in on webmention.io to get those link tags um, so that webmention.io can collect web mentions on your behalf. It will also give you an API key and you wanna securely save that. In this talk, I'm using Netlify. So I put my um, API keys in my environment variables inside of Netlify. And then I use the Netlify CLI to use them when I'm developing locally. So that's a secure way of doing it. You definitely don't wanna share your API key. And then you can optionally sign up for a social media web mention service like Bridgie. Let's talk about Eleventy. So <laughs> in case you're wondering why there's all these possums in this talk, um, the possum with the balloon is kind of like the unofficial Eleventy logo. <laughs> so, and these are my duotone possums. So we're on the road to Eleventy now. All right, Eleventy. So what are some of the key features of Eleventy? It is a node-based static site generator. Um, and it is non-corporate and open source. It requires no client-side JavaScript. 
So what it's doing is we are just, we're using JavaScript to write our code, but then um, that's only so that it can generate the static pages, but no, no JavaScript is actually shipped with your site. So it can be as um, efficient as possible. You can add client side JavaScript as well, but it's not built that way. It's a folder or file-based API. So, you know, if I have a file called about, then um, that will actually be the URL. And it accepts many different flavors of templating language like Markdown, Liquid, Nunjux, Pug, Handlebars, and all of this out of the box. So I, am a, I use mostly Markdown and um, Nunjux as a templating uh, language, and then HTML as well. Oops, let's go back to our slides. Okay. So let's take a little demo. And I actually wrote this demo up as a, like a miniature tutorial if you're brand new to 11 If you've already used 11 it's probably gonna be super basic, but this is only a 25 minute talk. So I wanna make sure I don't spend too much time on my 11 demo. Uh-oh, oh, my fires are going all over the place. All right, so let's get started. So to start up with your minimal 11 demo, you would um, have a package JSON and you would npm install 11 And actually it only needs to be a dev dependency, but um, I didn't install it that way. And then I have two scripts. I have a start script. This is so that I can develop locally. And all it does is it does a build and then it serves that build folder. And then the build script just runs the build without serving it. And then I added a file and you can see it's just marked down and I'm like, yo, 11D, this site rocks. And so if I now run that, npm run, npm start, and we can see that it is now being served on localhost 8080. And then I'm gonna come back to this in a second, remind me to, if I go here, this is my site, it's built. Um, that page is there. I can go in my, you can see that this folder was generated and it created index.html with only that HTML. And then it also created the readme, which is funny, which is why I said I would go back to the command line. Because remember, it's a file folder based um, API and there's ways you can ignore files. But you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to actually put all my source code in a SRC folder. So let's check out the next branch. And let me kill this because once you add a config, you're going to have to kill the server anyways. So I'm a GCO step two which is layout and styles, but also I did a little bit more. So here you we can see that I moved my, my code to an SRC folder. There's some extra stuff in there. And I added an 11D config. And this is because by default, it's only gonna watch files that it knows. So like Markdown, NJK, which is Nunjux, HTML, files like that. But it's not gonna recognize CSS or JavaScript, or I mean, it does recognize JavaScript, but it's not gonna create a page from it unless you tell it to. Um, and images. So what you need to do is add pass-through copy. And um, this says just only pass through this one file. I could also do an entire folder or use globs. And I also have customized, these are mostly the defaults, but I've now customized and said, I want this input directory of SRC just to organize my code. And so the other thing I did is I want a layout because um, this there's I need the rest of my HTML right like that's just the body but I want the rest of my HTML so what I do is I create this includes folder and I have this layout dot njk that's nunjux and you can see I have basically a wrapper around where all my content is going to be and this is what nunjux looks like it has like curly brackets and I also have this thing called title so now when I go to my index.md I add what's called um, yaml front matter and I've told it which layout file to use. So it's just gonna dump this content inside that content tag and that layout that we just saw. And I'm also setting this title attribute. So when I run my server, it will create this page using this layout and dumping in any extra data. I forgot to mention, I also pointed to the style sheet in our layout. So now if I refresh this, you can see I have these glorious purple and pink styles. <laughs> and you can see the title worked because my name of my tab has changed as well. 
So, you know, these are just like the basics of building a website, but using Eleventy. So let's go one step further and let's add a blog. And now what I've done is I have a blog folder and I have two posts. <coughs> they also have front matter. I have a title and then I have this other thing called blog. And um, what this does is there's this concept of collections in Eleventy. And one way you can create collections is with tags. So if I label this blog, then suddenly um, I will have, let me NPM start. I forgot if I logged them. Nope, I'm not logging them anymore. But now we have a collection. The all collection basically contains all of our pages. Now this new blog collection will only occur on pages where I've added this tag attribute and the value is blog. What the, now, why would I want that? Because I want to be able to actually, let's look at our homepage. This is our homepage. I converted it to Nunjux because what I want to do is I want to loop through that blog collection so that I can have a little list of all my blogs and their titles and um, other information as well we could add later on. So am I running my server? Yes, I am. Let me refresh. So now you can see I have my first blog. I click here. I see my second post. I click here. I see my first post. And ta-da, we have a blog. I have this actually written up if you just want to walk through that actually yourself. It's, <laughs> I have a short post on this tutorial. And that's just your quick intro to Eleveny if you've like never even tried it. Some of my favorite features that of course we can't cover because that was like the smallest demo ever is that I can generate pages based on a data set. Like for example, I, I'm really into board games, but I have a tiny house and there's, I don't have a shelf for them. So I've created this website with all my board games. And if you click on one, these actually are created from data. So I just have a uh, data that's like a games JS. And then I render each of these pages based on that data, which is, fun. You can also create layouts within layouts. So you can have like, you know, a blog layout within your master layout um, and whatnot and template partials, which kind of works like, you know, components. And then filters and short codes are nice for reusability inside of your templates. All right. So now that we have a little introduction of Eleventy, we can kind of dive into web mentions. Now this is a really short talk, so I am gonna share some code, but I'm gonna to try to focus more on you understanding the architecture of how it all works together. And then I have this in-depth tutorial, which you can also find just on the homepage. It's somewhere here. Yep, here it is. The in-depth tutorial of web mentions in Eleventy, so you can follow step-by-step, step, cause it is kind of a lot of code to like grok all at once. So what's the overall process? Well, what we're gonna do is when it's production, I don't do this every time I build locally, um, but when I do a production build, I wanna fetch new web engines and save them. I'm gonna store them in the cached file and I'm gonna talk about how we do that. And then I'm gonna render those web engines in the build. And then I also wanna set up periodic builds because I don't wanna like, you know, manually have to um, push up code every time I think I have new web engines. So how does that actually work? Because, or how am I setting this up? So I'm doing oh so serverless. So I have my code on my computer. These are our three entities we're working with. I have GitHub and I have Netlify. So when I push my code up to GitHub, this is how, if you've used Netlify before, you're going to be familiar with this. And I, I push that up to the main branch. And then whenever the main branch changes in GitHub, that triggers a build and deploy in Netlify. And then what I also have, which might be new for you, is I've set up this cache folder, which stays between builds so that I don't have to request all of my web mentions from scratch every time I do a build. And I'll, I'll show you how we do that. But then the other thing I've set up, which is really cool, is I have this GitHub action that acts like a cron job. And every four hours, which I should probably extend that some more, it doesn't need to be every four hours, Every four hours, it sends a hook to Netlify and it says to build it again. So basically to look for more web mentions and rebuild my site. So my web mentions are refreshed every four hours. 
And then there's, this is like in production mode, but also in terms of developing, like if I wanna pull in those web mentions locally, I can run Netlify dev. So I'd convert my um, start commands to use the um, production commands. And I would use Netlify dev, which is from the Netlify CLI. And that allows me to use environment variables that are only stored in Netlify. So that's a way you can keep things safe. It's also a way you can work with teams too. Like this is just my personal project, but there's, you know, you can have people work with your environment variables without ever actually seeing them by using the Netlify CLI. So let's actually jump into that code. Um, I, and I should say, I will answer questions in Discord. It's gonna be harder for me to go back in the chat here, but in Discord, I will definitely follow up with any questions you have and whatnot after the talk. But now it's diving into the code. So fetching new web mentions, we do it from our API URL, which you know contains all the data, but also your private token that's that you're saving securely. And I should also mention there's a lot of prior art on this, like Maxbox, Zach Leatherman, and Q Grant. I've used bits and pieces of all of their parts and kind of shuffled it around. Then we we, so we collect those um, web mentions and then we write them to our cache file. And I have this in an underscore cache directory. And then the piece to make this work in, um, and so like uh, I make, I don't put this cache file in GitHub. Um, so this is in my git ignore. So the way that we make sure that in production we don't use them is we use a Netlify plugin for a cache folder. This is one I built that basically anything that is put into the underscore cache folder is cached. There are several other versions of this, but um, to set this up, you would just install it um, and as a dev dependency, and then you would need to add a Netlify Toml file, which you tell it the build command, but also to use this plugin cache folder. Um, and that's the extent of the setup, which is really cool. I love Netlify. So back to our code, um, we wanna render our web mentions. And I remember I said like filters and short codes were one of my favorite things. So these filters are basically just functions we can use inside of our templates. So you can see I have um, get web mentions for URL. So like for each page of my site, get those web mentions. How many do I have? And, um, and then I wanna split the web mentions by type because you know there's likes, retweets, comments, et cetera. And then when I render them first, this is all nunjucks and you probably, I mean, you might not have ever used nunjucks, but just kind of get the gist of this right here. I'm just setting my variables. Like I'm saying mentions is equal to my web mentions. And then it's kind of like this weird chaining you do in, in, um, in nunjucks. This function is the first argument is actually this thing and then multiple arguments go afterwards. It's kind of weird. But anyways, I'm setting my mentions, likes, like size, replies, reply size, everything. And then I loop through my data. So if I say if replies are greater than zero, um, then tell me how many I have. And, um, and then I loop through them. We see for web mention and replies render this partial. So it's kind of like my web mention component. And then inside of that component, this is, it looks a lot more like HTML because most of it is, I'm just dumping in like, you know, author name, um, the text, and I'm also truncating it because I realized some people <laughs> were putting in really long ones and it would be like an entire article in and of itself and the URL, et cetera, et cetera. And here's, I mean, this is, this is my GitHub action for faking the Netlify cron job. You, um, you do need to put a secret build token inside of your GitHub setup to do this. Um, and it, all it does is it sends a hook and you can use cron tab guru to <laughs> figure out what your cron should be. This basically says at 20 minutes, pass every fourth hour from zero through 23, run this hook, which is just sending this post request to Netlify to trigger a build which is last time I did this, everyone was just like really excited about this part. Um, I guess people don't know you can do this in GitHub. Uh, and this is an article that actually talks about it as well. So ta-da, that's it. Um, so thanks for coming to my talk. 
This is the post where I will have the updated slides. Those are the old slides and the old video. Um, I'll also post a new video once they are up um, from Magnolia JS. The tutorial, the in-depth web mentions tutorial is here. Actually, if you just go to sia.codes, you'll see all the posts. Um, also, if you want to take next steps in 11D, I have a, a deeper dive on architecting data, which is probably going to be useful. Um, so yeah, check all of that out and I will jump into Discord and answer your questions. And yay, I actually did that under time by two minutes. <laughs> so thanks everyone. Thank you. You're awesome. Hey, look, we, we're going to have Mardi Gras for real this year. Well, you know, 